Hey guys, in this video I'll show you how I have played against the French defense, specifically the games I have played with the system that I recommend in my new course Crush Sub 1800s with E4, where I recommend the advanced variation with E5, meaning C5 with C3, and you know the big question really in these positions is, well, what is the move to play if black goes queen b6 and just piles all the pressure against our d4 pawn like so? And in this case, I find if you try to hang on to the pawn at all costs, it can be a little bit tricky to play at the uh, club level or the online level. And so what I actually recommend in the course and why I played a lot of my own games is the Milner Barry with bishop d3. But it's actually not quite the same as a normal Milner Barry, because after CD4, we're not just taking back, but we're actually playing castles. It's something I've actually tried to play in a lot of games already, and you know, after Bishop D7, it's kind of fun to play Rook E1, and that is that if they take, you just get much faster development than if you had taken on D4. But I also had a game against a 2000 player recently, where after Knight G7, I played H4, kind of anticipating Knight G6, trying to pressure our center by going H5. And then after he played h5, I went knight d2 and basically got this position where I went like knight b3, he took, I got my bishop out, my rook in the attack, and I just got a very nice lead in development and initiative for the pawn. It's a very dangerous weapon. This even been causing some problems for grandmasters in the last couple of years. And it's also a very modern way to play the position where, again, only in the last two or three years have people really start taking this sort of, basically this non-CD4 system seriously. So tell me, even if you're playing a very strong player, this could catch them out potentially. The thing is, I haven't actually got to play this version in that many games because most of my opponents actually play Bishop D7. And if you're playing players like below 2000, it's probably what you'll face most often as well. But Bishop D7 is actually a mistake here because of D takes C5 and then Bishop C5 and castles. And even though we've given Black a move for his development, the point is that they can't win a pawn with CD4 anymore, right? And if they go a5, you know, try and prepare knight e7 without running in a b4. Um, I had a couple of games with this actually. I had a couple of wins where I just played queen e2 and then knight e2 and just brought my knight to b3 like this. After this, I was able you know, to get rid of my opponent's good bishop for the knight, to get a nice bishop pair, nice space advantage, and you know, I had a couple of wins against a 1800 player on chess.com that gives some indication of how your opponents are most likely to play, you know, at least if they don't blunder the bishop with knight g7 and b4, which does come up a lot at the sub-1800 level from the databases. So yeah, that's sort of showing some ideas also if they do play knight e7. You know, I've had a couple of good games with dc5 where again this there's an even better version of transformation of structure because yeah, you're able to just develop and kick the queen all over the board, which is handy. So it's worth pointing out that they're not limited to playing queen b6. I've also faced bishop d7 in some games. And after bishop d3, like, a lot of the times your opponents will play queen b6 and just transpose, like, with uh, cd4. Uh, one move that has been a little bit tricky for me in the past is the move of rook c8. But then when I learned that you can just play dc5, and by the way, this is something I actually learned when I was, you know, preparing the material for my course, crush sub 800s with e4. I realized that this structure is also very nice for white, where once again we just hang on to our e5 strong point. The knight comes toward d4, a nice outpost in these structures, and yeah, why is it significantly better, let's say. So if they do play cd4, this is a line that kind of came up uh, actually in the previous video I did on the Sicilian with, because uh, you could oftentimes get this position from an Alapin move order with c5, c3, but it's a very nice position for white. If knight e7, you can just go like knight c3, knight f5, and now bishop e3 is a nice approach. We just go bishop d3 castles. So if we're going to take on e3, but then you get a nice chunky structure, as I you know, do explain in my uh, in my course. Uh, and I was going to try how to deal with the other alternatives, like bishop b4, and you know, some other moves I've also faced every now and then in my own games. And finally, yeah, there are a few alternatives they can play, like knight e7 is the one that I see the most often. But once again, bishop d3 works pretty well. Where, you know, again, it helps a lot to be able to play dc5 if they do, you know, try to attack our center with pieces or, or pawns, as it were. Well, mainly pieces, I mean, the pawns already attacking, yeah. So that's pretty much the key ideas, really, for this advanced French. Like, it's a pretty easy line to understand. There's not a huge amount of salties. So I do cover the salties, of course, in my in my course. I mean, the one other system they can play is, like, queen b6 and bishop d7, but 
only faced in one game, and I mean, Bishop d3, this approach still works pretty well for white, so really not too much to be concerned about. And if they don't play c5, I mean, you just have a very nice advantage with just normal developing moves. So it's kind of the reason why I recommended this, because it's a line that's just very systematic, very easy for white to play. And like most French lines, where you still have a closed position and not a lot really happens for a while, this is a line where you actually kind of get to open up the position and attack their king in a lot of cases in the middle game. So I wish you luck with playing these systems in your own games, certainly to really master the advanced variation and my recommend middle of the Gambit approach. You can definitely click the link in the description below to either, you know, buy my, my course or to enjoy the free sample and then decide for yourself uh, what to do from there. In any case, I will see you guys in the next training video. Until then, take care.